สวัสดีค่ะ and this is Thailand at large once again I will take you to enjoy the fresh air surrounded by the beauty of nature in northern Thailand this is b a n p o m Krai it is a tiny community hidden deep in the middle of a large dense forest which serves as the important stream source of m a r i m district in Chiang Mai And in the scenery view here, we could see that over over there is Doi i n t a n o n Actually, it is one of the highest mountain of Thailand. And over there, we could see m a r i m m a t a n g and c h i a n g d a o all the way through. And this area is actually around 1,300 or 400 feet above sea level, which is really high as well. So we could see a really great view here, which is worth it. The Ban p o n g k r a i became more known to tourists after villagers had got together to form an eco-tourism group in 2011. Upon doing so, the lifestyle of vocational activities, including the beautiful nature of communities, has been interestingly used as a selling point. In response to tourists, the Ban p o n g k r a i Ecotourism Group has now offered an extensive range of accommodations in the village, so that visitors can enjoy more convenience of their stay. Because the general physical condition of the Ban p o n g k r a i is a high mountainous region with hill flat in some parts. The village here has temperate weather all year long. Consequently, the occupation that employed most people in the village is growing various types of cold climate plants, which give quite a good yield. For example, flowers like chrysanthemums, vegetables like tomatoes. Wine yard where various types of home-grown vegetables are planted in the same greenhouse. This type of greenhouse will help control over weather conditions in order to suit well with the cultivation of each type of plants, especially the greenhouse. Its main function is to prevent the plants from plague infection and rain damage. Which have a positive effect on productivity and quality of agricultural products. The charm of v a n d a r Coluria ranges from light blue. To bluish purple, it is a real Thai orchid that people grow the most and is regarded as the king of v a n d a orchid. Removing it from the forest results in the rapid decline in the number of v a n d a k a l u l i a Until now, the campaign aimed at conserving v a n d a k a l u l i a has seriously been launched. The Ban p o n g k r a i in collaboration with Queen s e r i g e t Botanic Garden in Chiang Mai, has established a w a n d a k u r u l i a conservation project. Upon doing so, w a n d a k u r u l i a has been cultivated and brought back into the forest since 2008, and this is the activity that I am most interested in. So now we're in the um, w a n d a k u r u l i a 
um, conservation group where they actually planting the orchids here. <gasps> Look. This is how tissue culture is done by villagers here. All this knowledge is shared by the authorities at the Queen Surrogate Botanic Garden, proving that this kind of job can be easily done by villagers in general. So then we leave that small one here into this bottle and leave two years and they was growing, growing. And this is what you want to do? This is a bowl that is made from a bowl, a bowl, a bowl, a bowl, a bowl. This is actually the jelly here. It's a jelly food for the orchid. There are like banana inside, coconut, and sugar. And some vegetables they mix together. After the orchid has grown in a bottle for two years, the next step is to grow it. First, remove the orchid from its bottle carefully and then rinse its fruit through a brain. So you see the jelly food of the orchid, we have to clean it there so that it's not going to be like a bacteria or like anything else later on. Uh, and then we're gonna put it in the stick like this. After cleaned, the root of the small orchid will be attached to a drift root together with a potting material called sphagnum moss which provides moisture holding capacity. After that, we take note of the date when the orchid is attached to the driftwood so that we can determine the actual age of each orchid. Ah, like this when you get it, we just leave it there outside to let it grow and grow. And this one actually is an activity. If you come here, you can write down the date, your name, so you know this one is yours that you did. And then we leave it here around like three years until the orchid flower will come out. Villagers will nurse the Wanda Kruvulia until they feel certain that it is strong enough to be brought back into the forest like its ancestors. Wow, and this one like this, we wait around two years until the roots coming out like this. That means you can bring it into the nature. If not, you have to make it like this so they can be alive later on. So see, if the root coming out like this, that means it's good. We can bring it to the nature and it will grow later on better and better. So like this, if you wait around three or four years, it will grow like this. If you live into the forest, maybe longer, like four years. But if it's like in a farm for people to take care of them and you know put some substances better, it might grow in two years. So up to them like this. The forest that surrounds the Ban Pong Krai is totally still in perfect condition. The villagers here collaborated in conserving and protecting this forest, which is why they won the award for Chiang Mai's Outstanding Conservative Village.
the large sized trees that shoot up into a dense forest help provide soil with moisture holding capacity, becoming the source of various plants in the forest as well. Wow, and you can see how rich abundance the natural resources in the forest are because you can see right here, there are really a strange flower growing here naturally and it's kind of like a flower that looks really strange and weird but it's interesting in the same time like this. That means the natural around here, the forests around here are really good so that these kind of natural resources can grow better and better. Okay, so now we're just gonna go see how we're gonna actually leave the orchid that we have into the nature, into the forest to make it grow better, faster in a way. So this one is actually a really interesting topic because uh, mainly they're gonna leave uh, a community, people in the village to do it or they also have activity that could bring like students and people outside like tourists to come out and try to you know leave the orchid here like this. They're gonna stick into the, the wood stick like that from the farm that we have and then we're gonna bring the orchid here. We leave it here and we could see that. If the roots coming out and stick on the tree, that means it's alive. This is actually for the students to come, like it's easy, but normally if the um, community and the people in the village come, they're gonna have to climb up there with the stair up above, or we can either shoot it up to let it grow above. That would be better for them to actually grow more. Only few people know that these large sized trees do not live a solitary life but they have the company of many friends living together. One of them is different kinds of orchid species that come into existence and grow on the trees. They are waiting to flower so as to reveal the beauty of the wilderness here. So actually what's interesting is because up there on top they are the real natural orchids more than 10 species up there and that is why it's the origin of all the species of orchid that could spread around you know through the leaves and everything they're going to spread around and bring more orchids around the forest in this area which is actually one of the good part for the ecology of the natural resources that they could help each other and spread themselves more for them to survive which is really interesting is that the best way to conserve orchid is to leave nature to care for its own while humans are away. But if you want a beautiful orchid back home, I have a better choice. These artificial orchids are made by a group of housekeepers at the Ban Pong Krai who have creatively grouped together for over three years. The artificial orchids whose colors are heavily decorated as if they were real are made of special air dry polymer clay. This is what we can bring back memories that reminds us of the experience at the orchid land here. It's almost some kind of like an orchid community village already so that's why in this area um, people in this community are gonna do and create this kind of orchid like here for souvenir so they ordered this one it's like a science soul and we're gonna make it as like a orchid like this looks actually kind of real so let's know how we do it
and this one is 500 baht. So they are selling right here in the community for tourists to come and you know shop as a souvenir back home. Traveling almost the whole day in the village can sometimes make us feel tired and edgy, but no worry, not far from the artificial orchid group, there are also housekeepers who formed a group to provide Thai massage service, which I will be sure to visit. And right now, it's time for our dinner. Our dinner time with our special three menus today within the nature and right in the village with the community. We're gonna know the authentic lifestyle and how they eat right here. For example, this one is my favorite. We're gonna cook the um, nam prik nom. It's like a spicy, spicy chili salad. And this one is like maybe a barbecue egg. We're gonna put on this green one here. And this one is something unique. I've never tried this before. It's like pa lam. We're gonna put it in the bamboo. It's kind of like a bamboo stick. We're gonna put the fish inside and we grill it. Our first menu today is Nam Pik Nom, a popular northern Thai dish. It is not a difficult recipe to make. The first step is to put the grilled shallots and chilies in the mortar, add a little bit of salt and seasoning powder, then mix them roughly. We will thus get the shiu sauce that is usually served with vegetables. This food is suitable for those who want to lose weight like me. Now we're done with our first menu of today. My favorite, Nam Pik Nung. I'm just gonna put it here into the bowl, like this. And we need some hot sticky rice for it. The second menu is called Kai Bam. The first step is to put eggs in the bowl and add a little bit of salt seasoning powder and fish sauce. Then add shallots, chilies, and sweet basil leaves. Mix well. Spoon the mixture into banana leaf cups and grill on a charcoal stove. the banana leaf to cover to make it fully cooked faster as well. Okay, and now we're just gonna wait for this and we're not gonna go to the next menu which is the fish. Let's go to the fish. The next menu is called Lam Pla, prepared from big striped snake head fish. To begin with, different kinds of herbs are put in the mortar and mix them roughly. Lemongrass, mix together. Turmeric, this one. When mixed well, the herbs are placed on the body of the fish. Sprinkle with kaffir lime leaves. Wrap in banana leaves and tie with thin stripes of bamboo.
Finally, stuff the fish into a bamboo and put a cap on it. Okay, and now it's time for our fish menu. We're just gonna grill it here. Ani yang ta dai jiao. So we leave it here, barbecue on this place for one hour. Okay, wang yang dai ka. Ani, oh, ha tong mi tin ni ma, no la ko wang bo ni loi. Sun is gone. Today, I have been given the welcome of northern folk music performed by children in the village. It is not only so amazing to create the memorable warmth of their welcome, but the dinner that I helped prepare is also super scumptious. After our delicious dinner right here, a traditional one, and also we have been listening to a nice traditional songs, and also the children were dancing and Thai dance really cute. So actually, they were trying to play with these instruments since they were like eight or nine, and they have been practicing on this for two years already, and they can play. Play right now eight song, uh, and also for now, I would love to close our show today with our gorgeous song right here for the northern part of Thailand, and this is Thailand at last. Me and Ken Haga, we have to say goodbye for today. สวัสดีเจ้าสวัสดีค่ะเล่นเลยค่ะ